At the end of January, the British Museum and Victoria and Albert Vienna Museum announced that more than 30 Asante crown jewels, gold artifacts that once belonged to the royals of Asante, or Ashanti, in modern-day Ghana, would be brought to the Ghanaian city of Kumasi in April. This, however, is only a loan deal between the UK museums and the Ghanaian Manhaya Palace Museum. British laws ban museums from permanently returning contested artifacts to their original owners, which means that despite the announced repatriation, the golden items, illegally extracted some 150 years ago, will only be temporarily placed in Ghana. Will they ever be returned for good? Historical artifacts aptly depict the culture of a people. Given the waning influence of African traditional institutions, largely eroded by westernization and cultural importation, societal narratives find resonance when historical events and souvenirs are relied upon. When discussing the legacy of culture, tracing back to a time of overpowering community influence on legal, religious, and nuptial relationships, these artifacts lend credence to the veracity of handed-down stories. Despite fluctuations in the gold trade over the years, Africa's role as a significant player in the gold market is firmly established. In 2022, a cohort consisting of Switzerland, the UK, US, Hong Kong, and the United Arab Emirates accounted for about 60.6% .6 of global gold sales. However, Africa still holds over 40% of the world's gold reserves. This reality underscores the enduring importance of the continent in the gold industry. Official evidence of the looting of Ashanti gold began during the Anglo-Asante War of 1874, when Britain's military invasion of the Kumasi Empire, sitting on the largest gold reserves in the region, inflicted much damage. Armed with explosives and superior firearms, the British military went on a sordid quest for Ashanti's gold royal regalia, like the Mpanpansua sword created 300 years ago by the kingdom's Okamfo, spiritual leader, Anakai, which led the list of looted items in 1874. Under the pretext of ending slavery, British military incursions and lopsided trade treaties enforced with superior military might on African leaders occurred. Leaders who resisted were exiled, like the Asantehine Agumen Prempe, who was exiled to Seychelles in 1874. The British established trading ports, ensuring Britain declared itself a legitimate ruler on foreign soil. The rulers of several African kingdoms acted as middlemen in these trades, often against their will, but had to consent for self-preservation. The spoils from these conquered kingdoms paid for these wars. In Asante, the Asantehine, ruler of the Ashanti people, signed the Harsh Treaty of Fomina in July 1874 to end the war. A standout clause in the treaty between Queen Victoria and Kofi Karikari, King of Ashanti, was the payment of 50,000 ounces, over 1,400 kilograms, of approved gold as indemnity for the expenses caused to the Queen of England by the war. Britain incurred costs from these wars at the expense of its opponents, destroying Africa's biggest empires.